Today we are going to talk to a Desi kid who was born and brought up in the KC Indian community. Balancing her life between Indian home and the American outside, Ritu Agrawal Nanos has treaded a path that has now become the bane of many. Let's meet Ritu Agrawal Nanos. Hi, Ritu. Hi, thank you for interviewing me today. <laughs> oh, you're most welcome. And I think I wanted to know more about who you are. Can you introduce yourself to the community? Because I did introduce you as a Desi kid. Right. Oh, sure. Okay. Can you elaborate so, on that? Absolutely. Well, I'm Ritu Agarwal Nanos. Uh, Nanos because I did marry a white American man. So the uh, cultural integration happens every day for me in my life. Um, I... My family moved here to Kansas City in 1985, um, where I started going to school in the Blue Valley School District, actually Oak Hill Elementary, and um, then of course grew up into Oxford Middle School, and eventually went to Blue Valley Northwest High School. My class was the first freshman class of Blue Valley Northwest High School. So, wow, good. Yeah, yeah, we were kind of the <laughs> guinea pigs of that whole thing. Um, so growing up here, you know, when we first moved here, it was a very small Indian community. And um, so our families became very close-knit and tied. Uh, my parents were actually very involved in um, getting the Hindu temple started uh, and getting everything organized and the groundbreaking. So they were very heavily involved with our community's culture. And, uh, you know, as I look back as an adult on what they were doing for me, I, obviously I didn't really appreciate that as a child. But as I look back, I realize they're doing that to try and preserve culture for future generations. So of that, I'm really appreciative. Um, my parents, even though we were being raised in a Western world, they tried to do everything they can to expose me to their culture. Obviously, moving here, they knew they were making certain sacrifices. Um, so they, you know, I, I got to take classical Indian dance lessons like Murthnatham and Kuchipuri. And, um, you know, I did Ras with the Gujarati groups. Uh, my mom and dad taught me to sing lots of bhajans. So a lot of times I got to sing at the temples and be a, lot, a part of the temple events. Um, so they found a way for me to connect to my heritage through music. And that's what really spoke to me. However, you know, as a kid who was born into an Indian community, but they're being raised in a Western community, you know, there are always these questions as, as far as assimilating and finding where you fit in. Because it, it always seems like you have to choose one or the other. And of course, having Indian parents, you know, the dominant culture that they want you to choose yes, is the one that they the... were raised in. Correct. So it becomes almost a struggle, even though there doesn't need to be one. And as a kid, you don't really have the power to pick and choose what you like best from each culture. You have to kind of go with the flow of what your parents and the community you live in um, wants for you. So as I was growing up, I chose the path of choosing more of a Western lifestyle and Western culture. Um, and I'm sure that was really difficult for my parents. And I, I, I realized culture is really a personal thing. And, uh, you know, as I got married, I got married to a white American. And for us, coming from different backgrounds and different cultures, we had to connect on that personal culture level. It came down to our values as people. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of been the process of my life. And that, and that experience coming to where I am now has, has led me to a point where I feel like uh, I'd like to share my journey with others. But what made it come even more to the forefront is when I had my daughter, mm -hmm. Leela. She's mm -hmm. now two years old. And while I was pregnant with her, I had this epiphany that any connection she's going to have to her Indian heritage lies on my shoulders. It's not going to come from my husband he because he doesn't have the knowledge. Yes, he, he might support it. Yes. Um, and she's surrounded by my, my husband's family. My family mm -hmm. lives in other states. So although she sees them, her environment that she's immersed in from day to day is a very dominant Western culture. There's not a lot of things in our household mm -hmm. that indicate to her that she has some roots elsewhere. Yes. And I, to be honest, don't cook Indian food every day, <laughs> maybe once a month, if that, you know, because it's so easy to go out to eat or anything. Yes. 
So whereas even something as basic and simple as Indian food, which I got every day growing up, mm -hmm. and I, you know, at times was just hated. Uh, chapati mm -hmm. and dal again, you know, <laughs> pizza please. <laughs> but for her, that's not something that she's experienced. So I grew up knowing about Indian food, even though I was in a Western culture, because it was part of my daily life. But that's not even a part of her daily life. Right. So all of a sudden I had this crazy fear that some kid in her class one day, some Western kid is going to know more about her culture and her Indian food than she is. Than she is, yes. And I thought, and, well, and, how? And who may not have any roots any to Any roots India. to India. And I was, it was an embarrassing personal <laughs> internal moment for myself because I thought, while... So you decided to do something about something it. Something about it, <laughs> right. Because, you know, in the end, whether she chooses to connect to her Indian roots, whether she chooses to include that in her life, was not an issue to me. The issue was she should know her heritage and where she comes from. Because you can't know where you're going unless you know who you are and where you come from. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. So, so... <laughs> So what did you decide to do? I think that, that's the that's the key point now that right. you know what the problem is. Right. Now I think I want to hear your solution. My solution. <laughs> well, again, while I was pregnant with her and after I had her and I started thinking about these issues and about how I don't have all the knowledge or the resources to provide that that education for her. I have the bits and pieces. Right. So I went online to try and look to connect the dots. And what I found was that there was nothing really helping me connect the dots. There might be a website here, a website there. Um, a lot of my generation was focusing on pop culture that we were into, while the websites I did find were very Indian and not something that I could relate to. And if I can't relate to it, my daughter definitely wasn't going to find it relevant. Uh, they weren't modern or fresh. So, I thought what I needed to do was create a site, a source, where anybody can come to and find anything they wanted to know about Indian American culture, not Indian culture. Correct. Or not American or culture. Or not American culture. It's Indian American Indian culture. Indian American culture. And that means it comes from our experience. This hasn't been done before, so we need to put together content and a, and a source where this is available. and. A source that's not meant to tell people, this is what we think as Indian right. Americans, this is what we believe, so this is what you need to do. But a source that just provides information and knowledge and educates so that we become a reference point. Right. So that people can take that knowledge from that reference point and travel any direction they want to go. But at least they have a source they can go to to find the information. What they choose to do with it is up to them. And to me, that's how you develop a cultural identity, and that's how you frame identity for your kids. You have to have the knowledge, right. and then you do with it what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so okay, I think <laughs> now I do want, I'm, yeah, you I'm really curious want now, I want to know, what is so, the site name now? <laughs> the site is called Generation Ginger, and if you wow. go online, it's generationginger.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't launched yet, we're still in our pre-launch phase, so we're putting a lot of content together. How, how did you decide on the name Ginger? I mean, to well, include the word Ginger in the name. Yeah. I think I can, I can understand how, how Generation came about. Sure. How did Ginger come yeah. about? Well, you know, it's an interesting story. Um, when I first came up with the idea of this site, I approached a very close friend of mine, Nina Venkatesh. I had grown up with her. She, had, she and I had taken uh, Indian dance lessons, dance lessons together. So I wanted her to be my partner in crime. <laughs> and... Um, she actually, when we were coming, trying to come up with names and we were doing different things, and she came up with the idea of using Ginger in the name. Ginger Generation or Generation Ginger, because it, it's the root. And if we look at Indian cooking, Ginger is, uh, well, like the catalyst of the flavor of the food. I mean, without Ginger, it doesn't necessarily have to be an Indian taste. So we thought ginger is good because it is indicative of an Indian root, Indian culture. And then Generation Ginger, we're a generation that's growing out of our roots. And it's the idea of evolving out of our roots, but still knowing where we are rooted. And we just felt like ginger summed that up very, very well.